In this lesson, we'll take a look at equations of lines in two-dimensional space and also three-dimensional space a little later on in the, in the lesson. And in this first example, we're going to talk about equations of lines that you have previously, see, previously seen, perhaps in grades 9, 10, or 11. And in this first example, we're going to start with a line that goes through the point negative 2, 1 <coughs> and has a slope of 3 halves. Now, to illustrate the slope of 3 halves, there's a, a right triangle. The rise is 3, the run is 2, so there's the 3 halves. And uh, first of all, the point-slope form. And if you haven't seen this for a while, here's something to jog your memory. Point-slope form looks like this. It's y minus y1, y1 representing the uh, y-coordinate of a point on the line, equals mx minus x1. Actually, you get that by just rearranging the slope formula. And so y1 and x1 are the coordinates of a point in the line. Actually, it goes x1 first and then y1 second. And m is the slope. So we fill in 3 halves in place of m and negative 2, 1 in place of x and y. We get y, mi y minus 1 equals 3 halves x plus 2. Now, if we were to expand uh, that out, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 and we'll get the general or standard form. So we would go 2 multiplied by 2 on both sides so that when I multiply by 2 here, those 2's divide out. So if I expand this out, we would get 2y minus 2 equals, and if I expand the uh, uh, 3 in here, we get equals 3x plus 6. Now I want everything uh, to be, uh, to, well, to start with a leading coefficient of x that's positive, so I'm going to rearrange this way. I'm going to move the uh, negative 2 and the 2y to that side, so I'd have 0 here, and so we'd have 3x and it would be minus 2y, and uh, bring, bring the negative 2 over, be adding it to the 6, so I get plus 8 equals, equals 0. I have already have my equals 0 then on the side there, I guess. So we'll erase that. So the general form, that's where uh, 3x minus 2y plus 8 equals 0 comes from. Uh, if we were to take that and solve for y, we would get y equals mx plus b form, or slope y-intercept form, y equals 3 halves x plus 4. And of course you can see the y-intercept is 4 here. Now the problem with all three of those forms of equations is that none of them generalize to three-dimensional space and we eventually want to get there. So we're talking about equations of lines in three-dimensional space. In three space there is no concept of slope as in rise over run. There are directions for lines and we'll get into that but we don't refer to it as a slope in three space. So I'm going to show you the the new equations in uh, two-dimensional space first, and then we'll generalize to three-dimensional space. So flipping over to the next page, set it this, again, same line, um, goes to the point negative 2, 1. Now if the slope is 3 halves, 3, remember, goes rise over run, so that's the change in y, and that's the change in x. So if the change in y is 3 and the change in x is 2, then a vector parallel to the line would be 2, comma 3, because the, two, the change in x is the, how much you go horizontally, so that's the x component of the vector. The change in y is 3, which means we go up 3. And so there's a direction vector, so we go over 2, up 3, same as the slope, but it's, we're going to call it a direction vector. So m is our direction vector, it's going to be the vector 2, comma 3. So in general, if you have a slope of a over b, the direction vector would be b comma a. And uh, it's b comma a, not a comma b, because the top number, the numerator, is the rise. So it's the y component of the direction vector. Now, and again, of course, there is our uh, slope, same as the direction vector, really. So let's put a point on the line. The, P, the point x, y is just an arbitrary point. It has no specific coordinates. It just represents an arbitrary point. It could be any old point on the line whatsoever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vector from the origin up to that point and from the origin to a specific point that I know the coordinates of, the negative 2, 1, on the line. Now, this has made a triangle, and so we're going to use the triangle law of addition. And the triangle law of addition says that that OP vector, OP, is that vector, that green vector, is the sum of OA plus AP. And that's just triangle law of addition. This vector is equal to this vector plus AP. Now, what AP is, no matter where the point P is, AP is going to be some multiple of the direction vector because if P is on the line, then it's got to be uh, collinear or uh, in the same direction as the direction vector. Now, I shouldn't say the same direction as. If the point P was down here, uh, it would be on the same line 
as a and parallel the direction vector, but it would be in an opposite direction. So I'm really talking more parallel than in the same direction. So AP is collinear with M, which means that I can write AP as a multiple of vector M. Right now it looks like AP is perhaps about three M's. So an M, another M, and up here would be a third one. So I can write AP as a multiple of M. Now MT here is a, is a scalar. Uh, it's often called a parameter. It just, depending upon where the point P is, it will give you the multiple of vector M that gives you the AP vector. Now, we don't generally refer to these vectors with, as vectors with two letters, like tail and, and uh, tip of the vector. So I'm going to call this the vector P. I'm going to call this the vector A. And then uh, OP becomes P. OA is called the vector A. And then place of AP, I'm going to put the vector TM. And that's the general form of a vector equation. Um, P is equal to, and this is called the position vector of a specific point on the line a line, a point that you know in the line, plus t times m. And what that always gives you is a triangle like this. And I'll expand them more on that in the next page. Now, p, since p is the vector that goes from the origin to the point x, y, then we could call that the vector x, comma, y. a is uh, the vector that goes from the origin to the point negative 2, 1. So we could call a the vector negative 2, comma, 1, plus t times m. m, of course, is the 2, 3 vector. So that's what's called a vector equation of a line. x comma y equals position vector of a specific point on a line plus t times a direction vector for the line. That's what a vector equation looks like.